welcome. Welcome to our broadcast for today. We are so glad that God led you to join us. Please stay where you are. Get ready to be positively impacted by the word of God that you will hear today. Our theme uh -huh, is the dance of the deaf. Yes, you heard me right. The dance of the deaf. I preached this sermon a couple of years ago in our church here in New York. In fact, it was not just one sermon. It was three, because we had a weekend revival. And what I'm doing today is condense the three sermons into one. And you know the beauty of this today? I'm going to be giving you some prayer points as we go along. What is it about the dance of the deaf? I'm sure you ask. Well, stay where you are. You will find out what it is after my usual announcements. But I don't want you alone partaking of this blessing. Please call a friend, call a neighbor, and share the link of the platform that you are listening to or watching us on. Everyone deserves to be part of this blessing. Now, why do that? Here are my announcements. First of all, I would like to invite you to please check us out on Bishop Itiola's podcast. You can access the podcast by downloading my podcast app on the Google Play Store. For those of you that use the Android phone, or you can listen directly on the Spreaker app, which can be downloaded for both the Android and the Apple phone, Spreaker. It's spelled as it is pronounced, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E You'll be joining listeners from over 50 countries around the world that have downloaded about 98,000 episodes. Yes, I implore you to please help us share the word. We're also present on Facebook, on Twitter, on MixLR. And of course, on television. We're on RBS TV 13 every Saturday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. local time. That's in the great country of Guyana. We're also in 23 Caribbean island countries through Mercy and Truth TV in Jamaica every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 local time. And every Wednesday, early morning, 1.30 a.m., that's local time also. My prayers are God will bless the owners of those stations and those who work for them. May the Lord grant you his speed as you strive to spread the gospel. Please don't forget our own radio station also. Listen to us on Fresh Waves Radio. Yes, you heard me right. Fresh Waves Radio. It's on 24-7. And you can listen to a variety of programming that will surely be a blessing to your soul. Fresh Waves Radio. You can download the app for both the Android and the Apple phones from their respective app stores. Just type Fresh Waves Radio, install the app, and believe me, you are good to go. It's all free. Don't forget our outreach on Thursday and on Friday. Every week, I'm on Facebook Live, where we gather together around the world to pray and to seek the face of the Lord. Every Thursday night, 7 p.m. New York time. Every Friday night, 7 p.m. New York time. Live on Facebook, but we're also on Mixer R. We're on, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube, and we're on Twitter also. Many lives have been impacted and changed by these prayers. You know what they say? A trial. They say we'll convince you. Please join us this Thursday and this Friday. It's going to be a life-changing experience praying at the throne of mercy. 
Those are my announcements for the week. Let's ask God now to bless us. Father, without you, we can do nothing. We need your blessings. We need your anointing. We pray you will come and do a new thing in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen. My theme again, ladies and gentlemen, is the dance of the deaf. The dance of the deaf. By definition, a deaf person is someone who lacks the power of hearing. That's what it is. Consequently, a deaf person is unmoved by any form of sound that is made around him or her. It's unaffected by sound and is indifferent to sound. It's unresponsive to sound. It's unconcerned about sound. It's unmindful, unaware, unconscious, and of course oblivious to any form of sound that is made around him or her. If music is being played around someone who is deaf, he cannot respond because he cannot hear the music. No matter how beautiful the sound of music may be, he cannot snap his fingers to the sound nor tap his feet. He cannot shake his head in short, he cannot dance to the sound of music. Most people dance because someone around them is making them dance by singing around them, by playing live or recorded music around them. That's why they are able to dance. All those don't move the one that is deaf and hard of hearing. When you see the deaf dance, it's not because of someone making them dance. It is because something happens that triggers the dance. The deaf dances, not because someone is playing music, but because something is playing music. Can I repeat that? If you see the deaf dancing, it's not because someone is playing music. Uh-uh. It's because something is playing music. I want to begin by praying for you. You remember what I said earlier? As we go along, I'm going to be making some pronunciations into your life. I hope you will say amen as I make these pronouncements. Let me begin by saying what will make you dance without a band. May it happen to you this month. Did I hear an amen? Good. What will make you dance without a band? May God let it happen to you this month. Things that are connected to joy. Things that are connected to breakthrough. Things that are connected to victory, may they come your way this month in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Things that are connected to sudden elevation, solutions to long-standing problems, things that will cause you to break into dancing without any guitar playing, without any drum playing, without any soloist singing, without any choir rendering a song, rendering a song. May those good things be your portion for the rest of this year in the name of Jesus. I hope you said amen. I pray for you again. Happiness that will suddenly turn you into a composer. Happiness that will suddenly turn you into a soloist joy that will turn you into a praise dancer 
all by yourselves. May it be your portion as a result of what you are hearing today in the name of Jesus. I pray for you again. May you become an expert in the dance of the death in the name of Jesus. May every day from this day be day after day for you to dance the dance of the death in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, dancing, as you all know, is a common experience in the Bible. The Bible is a book of dancings. I don't know why some people have problem with dancing. The Bible isn't a song book, nor is it a dance book, all right? But did you know that there are at least 185 songs and dances in the Bible? Yes, you heard me right. At least 185 songs and dances in the scriptures. Songs, dances that are triggered by battles that are won, triggered by coronations, triggered by funerals, triggered by cities being conquered and seas splitting up. You can find songs and dances in the Bible for all kinds of occasions. I'm not done praying. I hope you are not done saying amen either. I pray for you. I said I pray for you that occasions will spring up in your life that will trigger you into singing and into dancing without a band. Yes, there are at least 185 songs and dances in the Bible. 150 of those joyous occasions in the Bible are in the book of Psalms, which actually in itself is a song book, even though it's written by a lot of people more than just King David. I'm sure you know that. But you can find 35 plus more songs, chants, and hymns scattered across the Old and the New Testaments. My interest today, though, is not about the songs and dances that were triggered because someone was playing the trumpet or because someone was playing the harp or because someone was shaking the tambourine. Now, that's not my focus today. My focus today is something else entirely. Don't get me wrong. All those are good. But you know what? Those were songs and dances that had human aid. Somebody was singing, so they danced. Somebody was playing a musical instrument, so they danced. That's not the kind of singing I'm talking about. That's not the kind of dancing I'm talking about. Those were songs and dances that came because they heard the sound of music. But our focus on the broadcast of today is the singing and the dancing of the deaf. You don't hear anything, you don't even see anything, but you just break into a song and you break into a dance without any accompaniment. The one you do by yourself, maybe in the bathtub. The one you do by yourself, maybe in the shower. The one you do by yourself, maybe in your bedroom, because God did a great thing in your life and you are rejoicing. You know what? The Bible is full of examples of such dances of the deaf. I pray for you again and again and again. You will receive good news in the name of Jesus from far and from there that will trigger a dance and trigger a song in your life. You will see a change, I prophesy to you, that will trigger a song and a dance for you. You will receive a letter in your mailbox. You will receive a letter by email, 
get a phone call, receive a positive doctor's report that will make you sing the song of the deaf and dance the dance of the deaf. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You know, I have quite a few instances where people broke out into the song and the dance of the deaf in the Bible. What I'm going to do is I will read to you the songs to their dances. That will help you to know how to pray. And I'm going to give you some pronouncements, and then we'll go on with some scriptures. So you can experience the same things that made these people in the Bible to sing and dance without anyone playing any music. There is a song in the Bible that is called the Magnificat. I'm sure you've heard that before. Well, here is my own version of the dance. <laughs> the song is the Magnificat. Well, I simply call the dance the Magnificato. That sound like an African? Good. No instrument was played. No professional singers were present. God unexpectedly did something marvelous, and it caused someone to break into a dance and to break into a song. Something marvelous, I prophesy, is coming your way right now that will make you sing and dance like the one I want us to pray about momentarily, the Magnificat. The person behind this spontaneous praise and this spontaneous dance is none other than Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. She had earlier received an angelic visitation, as you all know, and the angel delivered good news to her about an earth-shattering favor that God will give her that will change her life forever. I pray for you that God will send you angelic messages that will cause you to sing and that will cause you to dance. May God give you an uncommon favor that will cause you to sing and cause you to dance. Well, to cut a long story short, Mary became mysteriously pregnant. Well, she went to the house of Elizabeth and discovered that her story has also changed. I pray for you all. May this be a season when the story of everyone around you changes. Not only your own story changing, but your cousin's story changes, your uncle's cha story changes, and everyone connected to your life have changed stories. Well, what happened to her? Look at the story in Luke chapter 1, beginning to read in verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Note, there were no drums, there were no harps, there were no musicians. She was the soloist, just broke into the song that theologians call the Magnificat. Because the Magnificent God did something magnificent for her. He said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. You know, we used to sing a worship song in the 1980s. Those words are verses 46 and 47. Many choruses we sing and dance to were actually songs, ladies and gentlemen, that triggered the dance of the deaf when they were originally penned. You remember that song? Spring up, oh well, with the muscle. Yes, we used to sing that song. And another one we used to sing, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside him. Neither is there any God like our God. Neither is there any rock like our rock. 
Those were songs that were triggered by happenings that made somebody happy. And so they were dancing like the deaf will dance because they experienced something on the inside. It came out in the form of a song and it came out in the form of a dance. That's what I mean by the dance of the deaf and the song of the deaf. May that be your portion, that something great, something marvelous, something wonderful, something magnificent will happen to you from the hands of the living God that will cause you to break into a song and break into a dance. Look at Luke 148. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. This is still the song going along. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He has pulled down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent empty away. He has hoped in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to our own house. Don't you think I need to make some pronouncements in your life? That these prayers, that these prayers will turn into songs for you. That you break out into a song of the deaf, into a dance of the deaf, because of what you experience as a result of the goodness and the mercy of God for you. Mary said, my soul, doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. I pray for you, and I hope you say amen wherever you are today, that good things and great things will begin to happen in your life that will cause you to magnify God and rejoice in God and dance the dance of the deaf. Can you say that after me? Say, oh Lord, come and say it. Say, let good things, say, let great things begin to happen in my life that will cause me to magnify you and rejoice in you and dance the dance of the deaf in the name of Jesus. Mary went on and she said, and my spirit, hallelujah, hath rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. I want you to pray tonight, today, whether night or day. I don't know what time it is that you are watching this. May God look down upon your low estate and lift you up on high. Can you repeat that after me? Say, oh Lord, look down upon my low estate and lift me up on high in the name of Jesus. I want to make another pronouncement that where you are nothing, God will make you something. Did you hear my pronouncement? I hope you said amen. Where you are presently nothing, may the Almighty make something out of you. Say after me, say, Lord, say where I am nothing, cause me to become something. Mary was nothing expecting nothing, applying for nothing, and yet God selected her for something. And I don't care where you are in the world, no one can ever forget Mary. I pray for you that God will do something in your life that will cause your level to change overnight. Did you hear that? Say after me, say, Father, do something in my life that will cause my level to change overnight. Can you imagine it was the prayer of somebody 
that came as a result of a song she sang when something great happened in her life. She said, for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. I pray for you that the Lord will bless you with blessings that will last to many, 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 many generations. You know, there are people that get blessed and the blessing ends with them. Not that of Mary up till today. Imagine how many generations passed. I don't think anyone can preach the gospel without acknowledging the great role that Mary played. I pray for you that God will allow something marvelous, something wonderful to happen in your life that will impact many, 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 many generations to come. God will release such blessings into your life. I told you I came to preach, but I also came to pronounce blessing on you in the name of Jesus. Why don't you make a confession right now? Say after me, say I confess. I didn't hear you. Say I confess with my mouth that henceforth, all generations are called me blessed. See, I confess with my mother from now on, all generations to come shall call, call me blessed. Things will happen in my life. Great things will happen in my life. Mighty things will happen in my life that people 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years down the road will remember my name and say, wow, he came and he lived a life of blessing. Let's read on. What Mary said in verse 49, as she sang this Magnificat, for he that is mighty has done great things and great things for me. Holy and mighty is his name. I want you to pray, say, oh, mighty God. Come on, say it. Say, oh, mighty God, do great things for me that will cause me to sing and praise in the name of Jesus. Say, O Lord God Almighty, do great things for me that will cause me to sing and that will make me to dance. In the name of Jesus. Look at verse 50. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Did you hear that? His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. And I ask you to pray this day. Say, Lord, let me see your mercy in every area of my life. Come on, open your mouth and pray that prayer. Say, Lord, let me see your mercy in every area of my life, in all areas of my life. Let me be a recipient of the mercy of God. Say, give me grace. Come on, open your mouth and say it. Say, give me grace to be numbered among those that fear God. Yes, we live in a day and an age where people don't fear God anymore. It's a wonderful thing to see men and women, very few in number, that fear God today. Say, Lord, give me grace to be numbered among those that fear God. She said in verse 51, he hath showed strength with his arm. Don't forget this was a song, all right? It was composed spontaneously on the spot. That's what I mean by the song of the deaf. Something happens, and song just bubbles out of you. He hath showed strength with his arm. Ah, I pray for you that by his strength in his arm, the Lord will peel, pull you up to higher heights. Many of us need to be pulled up. I pray that the Lord will pull you up with his strength. The Lord will pull you up with the power of his arms in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will scatter all those who are proud and who imagine proud things around you. All those who are arrogant, all those who are proud, all those arrogant imaginations that are fashioned against you. The Lord will scatter all of them one by one in the name of Jesus. The Lord will disappoint the thinking of those who think that you will amount to nothing. Isn't it so sad? that there are people that look at you and just size you up, that you can never amount to anything. I guess that's what that was how they were looking at Mary, only to find out her name will go into the books of this world. 
as the one who brought forth the Savior. I like what she so said, actually what she sang in Luke chapter 1 verse 52. It says, he hath put down the mighty from their seats. I pray that your heavenly father, the one that you have a relationship with, will pull down the mighty from their seats. They will be the mighty on, the, on your job, the mighty in your village, the mighty in your town, the mighty wherever they are. God is able to pull them down and is able to elevate you. And those that have lifted themselves up against you, may God put them down. There are people who go around and see they are God. No, there's only one God. There's only one God. And anyone who goes around claiming to be God in your life, may God pull them down and pull you up. He said he has exalted those of low degree. Isn't that beautiful? I am of low degree. <clears throat> That's who I am. I'm talking personally now. I pray that God will let me experience divine exaltation. May God give you divine exaltation. May God let something great happen in your life. Who knew Mary? Nobody knew Mary. But after God exalted her of low degree, you know, everybody in the world know who Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, is. He has filled the hungry with good things, verse 53 said. I pray for you. And I hope you say amen to this, that the Lord will fill you with all good things that you are hungry for. My, there are many good things I am hungry for right now, spiritually, physically, materially, and otherwise. I can say that for a fact. And God is able to fill the hungry with good things. I pray for you and I pray for myself that this omnipotent God with whom all things are possible, who has in his power the dominion to do all things, may he fill you with all good things and meet your hunger and quench your thirst. He says the rich he has sent empty away. May we never be emptied of anything that God has given us. I'd like to say to those of you who are no dead right now, think humbly because the Lord can empty you. I pray the Lord will never empty you. I pray you'll never do anything that will cause the Lord to empty you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. This is a beautiful song of the death. It's worth praying about. It's worth meditating about. If I have time, I'll write a whole book of prayer on the magnific Magnificat. I said the Bible is full of the dance of the deaf. I said the Bible is full of the song of the deaf. Many, many instances where no music was played. Men and women just danced and sang because of what God did for them. Judges chapter 4 verse 22, I read. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, I will show thee the man that thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temple. You know that story. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed the king of Canaan. That's, that's what triggers the song. When you prosper, when you prevail, the next thing you see consciously or unconsciously is that a song of praise, a song of thanksgiving, and a dance in your bedroom, a dance in your bathtub is triggered. May God give you the song of the deaf and the dance of the deaf. Now join that to Judges chapter 5 verse 1. After this victory was won, after this prosperity was released, the Bible says in chapter 5 verse 1, a song broke out. Then sang Deborah and Barak 
the son of Abinoam on that day. Yes, I tell you when blessings come down, songs are triggered. No composer, you just become a composer by yourself. Look at what they sang. In Judges chapter five, verse number two, praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel. When the people willingly offered themselves, Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praises to the Lord of God of Israel. Then in verse 24, this was what Deborah described. It is, she described exactly how it happened. In verse 24, this is all a song, folks. It's all a song. You will have something to describe very soon. In a song you will compose talking about the goodness and the mercy of God received. She said, blessed above women shall jail the wife of Heber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with a hammer, she smote Sisera. Yes, she smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken him through his temples. And her feet, he bowed. At her feet, he bowed. She fell. He fell. Not she fell. He fell. He lay down at her feet. He bowed. He fell. He bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. You can see the beauty of the song that Deborah composed. I love the next statement of Deborah in that song. Judges chapter 5, in verse number 28. The mother of Sisera looked out of a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming. Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered, Yay! She returned answer to herself. Have they not spared? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two to Sisera a prey of diverse colors? A prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as a son when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest for 40 years. What a song! I pray for you. I pray for you. You will be composing some beautiful songs, not many days hence. Some beautiful songs about what God is going to give you. Some beautiful songs about what victory God is going to let you experience. Some beautiful songs about what God is going to send into your life. And the Bible says, after this, they had rest for 40 years. That's a whole generation. I pray for you that for the next 40 years and beyond, you shall have rest. Since you didn't say amen, I will pray that prayer again. I said I pray for you that for the next 40 years and beyond, God shall give you rest. And year after year, you'll be dancing the dance of the deaf and you'll be singing the song of the deaf. It shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. We, there are so many, so many songs in the Bible, folks. So many dance of the deaf in the Bible. There was another spontaneous song. There was another spontaneous dance of the deaf. The theologians call it the Magnificat of the Old Testament. Isn't that something? We just looked at the Magnificat of the New Testament. That was a song rendered by Mary. But this is the Magnificat people of the Old Testament. Like the New Testament counterpart, no one was playing drums, no violin, no trumpets, no tambourine, 
Yet, it's another lady. Yes, it was another lady that did the singing. It was another lady that did the dancing, the dancing of the deaf, the singing of the deaf, because of what God did for her. I pray for you. May God cause great things to happen in your life that will cause you to join the saints of the Old Testament. Old Testament that will cause you to join the saints of the New Testament and break forth into singing and into dancing. Well, our composer of the Old Testament Magnificat and the soul dance group of the Old Testament is none other than the woman mentioned in First Samuel. Yes. You know, there's just something about women. We respect you. We honor you. Yes. The original curse to women included the word sorrow. Read it in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Whatever sorrow is in your life, you as a lady watching me or listening to me today, May God transform that into joy for you. May the original curse be turned into permanent blessing for you. This Old Testament Magnificat came as a result of the reversal of a painful condition that this woman found herself. Yes, she did. Let me read it to you. You know the story, but I'll read it to you. For Samuel chapter 2, reading in verse 1. And Hannah prayed. Have you ever heard a song that sounds like a prayer? <laughs> here it is right here today. She'll actually have been Hannah sang, not Hannah prayed. Because the prayer and the dancing, they look so similar. If the content of these next 10 verses become reality in your life, seriously, you also will surely sing, you also will surely dance without anyone playing the draw. The dance of the deaf, the singing of the deaf, you will surely. My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Then he said, she said, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Remember what I said that many of the songs we sing today, they are from the song of the deaf and the dance of the deaf. Nobody taught her this song. Nobody, well, she was not reading from a script. She just broke into it. You know, I pray that you will also compose your own Magnificat very soon because of what God will do for you after years of being without. I like what she said in verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord, Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are guarded with strength. Verse 5, they that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath born seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth, the Lord maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and he bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor, and maketh rich. He bringeth low, and he lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the downhill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. 
for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength, hallelujah, shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Wow, what a song, what a song. Now you see clearly what I mean by the song of the deaf and the dance of the deaf. I told you, the deaf doesn't hear anything. All right? So when you see a deaf person dancing, it's because something has happened or he has lost his mind. But when a deaf person in his right mind is dancing, then there's something to dance about. Because even if anybody were playing any music, he will not be able to hear, talk less of respond. But when you see the dance of the deaf and you see the deaf singer, you know there's something from the inside that is causing them to do this without any outside influence. I pray for you. Now whether anybody plays music or anybody doesn't play music, there'll be a music in your soul because of what the good Lord will do for you. He did it for Anna, the Magnificat of the Old Testament. He did it for Mary, the Magnificat of the New Testament. You are next in line for this Magnificat, for something mighty, for something great, for something marvelous to happen in your life that will cause you to break into a song and to break into a dance. As I close today, I pronounce upon you, I pronounce upon you, I said I pronounce upon you that as it happened for this lady, called Hannah, in spite of all the ridiculous things that were going on around her in her family, it will happen for you also. I don't know who is fighting you. I don't know who is ridiculing you. You don't have, and yet they are making fun of you for not having. Hold on. I pray for you, and I pronounce upon you celebration, not many days hence. we got a few more minutes, so we can as well use that to pray. Let me give you about two or three, maybe four or five prayer points, and we'll pray together. Say in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Say in the name of Jesus. See, as Mary broke into a song without a musician, as Hannah broke into a song without a musician, I pray in the name of Jesus, God will make things happen in my life that will make me break into a song and a dance. Open your mouth and let's pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray as we are about to go off the air today, the dance of the deaf, let it be our dance. The song of the deaf, let it be our, our song that things will happen in our lives. Things will happen around our lives uh, that will cause us to break into a song, that will cause us to, to worship you, that will cause us to dance before you. Oh Lord, let great things begin to happen in us, for us and around us, uh, that will make us break into a dance, uh, the dance of the deaf. Uh, oh Lord, the deaf doesn't hear, but if you see them dancing, it's because something is happening on the inside of them. Uh, oh Lord, let things begin to happen for us. Uh, let great things begin to happen for us like they happened for Anna, like they happened, oh Lord, for Elizabeth, like they happened, oh Lord, for Mary, the Magnificat of the Old Testament, uh, the Magnificat of the New Testament. Uh, Father God, let things Things begin to happen in our lives uh, that will make us to break into a song and a dance. Uh, do it in the lives of our parents. Uh, do it in the lives of our children. Uh, do it in the life of our ministry. Uh, do it in the life of my business, oh God, uh, that things will happen that will make me to dance. Uh, and I'll be driving on the highway and I'm singing out loud. Uh, and everybody's looking at me and wondering what 
is making this crazy lady to sing is because the Lord has done great things for me at work. Oh Lord, let it be my portion, let it be the portion of everyone that is watching me right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Lord, breaking into a song without a musician, let that be my portion. Make things happen in our lives that will make us break into songs and dances in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray another prayer. Say, oh Lord, as you did it for Mary and Elizabeth, about the same time. Can you believe that? It was about the same time. It happened for Mary and it happened for Elizabeth. I want you to pray, so, say, oh Lord, let blessings visit me and my family circle. Say, oh Lord, let blessings visit me and my family circle that will cause all members of my family to rejoice at the same time. Mary rejoiced around the same time, hallelujah, that Elizabeth rejoiced. Say, Lord, it shall be my portion, it shall be my portion, it shall be my portion. As you did it for Mary, as you did it for Elizabeth, about the same time, around the same time. Ah, let there be breakthroughs. Let's call it family breakthroughs. My children, my firstborn, my secondborn, my lastborn, let them have breakthroughs that will cause us to rejoice. Let blessings visit my family circle that will cause everybody in my family to rejoice at the same time. Joy visit us. Breakthrough visit us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray today that your family will not inherit family curses, but they will inherit family blessings. In the name of Jesus, two women getting pregnant, and you know what? They were given, they were to give birth to special personalities. One to John, one to Jesus. People People that really, really changed and shaped history. Father God, let it be so for my brothers. Let it be so for my sisters that are watching me today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That when it happens, we will break into a dance, break into a song without anybody playing drums or playing the tambourine. We're just happy. In the name of Jesus, dumbfounding breakthroughs. Did you hear what I said you should pray for? Dumbfounding breakthroughs, amazing breakthroughs, shocking breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs that no one can explain like that of Mary. Let it be my portion, let it be the portion of everyone that is watching me and praying with me right now. Look at the blessing, look at the breakthrough, look at the miracle that Mary received. No one could explain how can someone who has never known a man get pregnant. Mary did so shall it be your portion. So shall it be my portion. Shocking miracles, shocking breakthroughs that no one can explain. Papa, release it to us, release it to us, release it to us. Release it to everybody watching me right now. Release it to everybody listening to me right now. What man cannot do for them, let the Holy Ghost do for them in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth, say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Say what no man can do for me, do it. Do it, 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 do it. The Holy Ghost, the third man in the Trinity. Power, power, power. Let your power come upon me right now. Let your power come upon my ministry right now. Let your power come upon my body, my health right now. Let your power come upon every area of my life right now. In the name of Jesus, and do for me what no man can do. And do for me what no preacher can do. And do for me what no prophet can do. In the name of Jesus. What man cannot do for me, the Holy Ghost must do. What man cannot do for me, the Holy Ghost will do. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Father, release you, release you, release you, release your blessings. That what no one can do, you will do for us, O God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray that where you are asking, how shall this be? Hey. 
Don't we all ask that question sometimes? How shall this be? How will this happen? I want you to pray that the Holy Ghost will make it happen. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that I am asking right now, how shall this be? I've looked at it up, I've looked at it down, and there is no guarantee I can ever have this. Oh Lord, with you is a guarantee, hallelujah. With you is a power, with you is the anointing to make it happen. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost that brought Jesus into Mary. Let that Holy Ghost bring blessings into my hands that are raised right now and release blessings unto your people that are watching me, that are praying with me right now. You will sing a song that you never knew before. You will dance a dance that you never knew before. In the name of Jesus, you will sing it in private. You will sing it in public. You will dance it in private. You will dance it in public. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, how shall this be? Whatever you are asking right now, and you are wanting to know, Lord, how shall this be? How can this ever happen? Oh, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost, make it happen, oh God. Let it be, oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, those who have said it will not happen. May the Lord shock them. May the Lord surprise them. And where you have said it will not happen yourself, may the Lord shock you. May the Lord surprise you by doing the impossible for you and causing you to smile and causing you to dance and causing you to sing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus may great surprises enter your house, may great surprises enter your bank account may great surprises enter your spiritual life, may great surprises enter your ministry may great surprises enter your business that will cause you to break forth into a shout into glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release that blessing into your life right now. The dance of the deaf, the singing of the deaf, may it be your portion from now on in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And everybody watching and listening to me said amen and amen and amen. Father God, I pray for myself and I pray for those who are watching right Right now, I pray for those who are listening right now also that you will do a new thing in their lives like you did for Anna, like you did for Mary, and they will bring forth their own magnificent of 2023 and 2024 to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Papa, for the answer. Do great things. Do mighty things in the lives of your people. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. We believe that God has blessed you. Go and begin to dance. Go and begin to sing. Until next time when we come your way again, keep on dancing and keep us singing. Bye-bye.